Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship this morning with Calvin Presbyterian Church. If you are uh, perhaps joining us uh, for the first time or it's just been uh, a couple times that you found your way to us, we are so glad um, that you are joining us uh, for, for worship. My name is Kevin White. I am the, the pastor of Calvin Presbyterian Church. And so on behalf of the whole congregation, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to worship this morning. Uh, this, uh, if, if you are joining us uh, for the first time or it's only been a, a couple times, uh, we invite you to, uh, to let us know. Um, send us an email, maybe a, a comment in the, uh, in the, on the Facebook page. Uh, just let us know that you've been worshiping with us. We'd love to, to hear from you, and uh, we can also um, maybe answer any questions you may have about, uh, about this church, about who we are, um, who Cal about Calvin Presbyterian Church. This morning, um, it is the, the second Sunday of Advent, the season of, of preparation uh, as we prepare ourselves uh, to celebrate uh, the coming of the Lord on, uh, on, Christmas, uh, on Christmas Day and in the, in the Christmas season. Um, today is also the first Sunday of the month, um, and it is our practice here to celebrate uh, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, to celebrate communion on the first Sunday of each month. So we will be doing that in this, in this service. So if you have um, your communion elements, uh, you are invited to, to have, them, uh, have them with you as, as you worship, and then we can partake of them uh, together later on in the, in the service. Well, as we uh, prepare ourselves to worship the Lord this morning, I invite you to, to join me in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you sent your prophet John to prepare your way among us, to call us to repentance and make our pathways straight. Lord, strengthen us to live lives of steadfast love and faithfulness as we await the Messiah's return, that all may see your reign of peace through your just and gracious rule. Lord, send your spirit Send your spirit into all the places that we are gathering to worship this morning. Um, living rooms, dining rooms, gathered around computers or phones, wherever we may be, Lord, fill our places with your spirit and fill us with your spirit that we may worship you well this morning. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So this morning, uh, we are going to be assisted in, in worship um, by Brad Cruzan, who is one of our deacons, uh, and he will be assisting from home, and he will begin uh, by leading us in this morning's call to worship. Good morning. Please join me in our responsive call to worship, which comes to us from selections from Isaiah 40. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places of plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And now, Rachel and Ezra White will be leading us in lighting the Advent candles this morning from their home. If you have Advent candles at your home, you're invited to light yours during the lighting as well. After the lighting of the Advent candle, our opening hymn will be People Look East. Please join in singing as the words will be on your screen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. We light these candles as a sign of the present and coming light of Christ. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make a highway in the desert for our God. From ages of old, no ear has heard, no eye has seen one so glorious as the Lord our God, for whom we wait. Every valley shall be lifted, every mountain and hill made low. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those, Those who, who lived in the land of deep, deep darkness, darkness, on, on them, them light has, has shined.
people look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way. Stars keep their watch when night is dim. One more light the bowl shall brim, shining beyond the frosty weather, bright as sun and moon together. People look east and sing today, love the star is on the way. Angels announce with shouts of mirth, cries who brings new life to earth. Set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today, love the Lord is on the way. In 2 Peter, we are assured that the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Let us therefore confess and repent together. Please join me in our corporate prayer of confession, followed by a moment of silent personal confession. Let us pray. Faithful God, we confess that we have not led lives of holiness. We suffer from impatience apathy, and greed, we have not been at peace. We look for you in the places of power and ignore your voice spoken from the margins. Baptize us with the Holy Spirit that we may repent of our sins and turn to you in love. Let us hear what you will speak, for surely your salvation is at hand. And now a moment of personal silent confession. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Now having confessed, hear these words of promise from the prophet Isaiah. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God will stand forever. Sisters and brothers, receive and believe the good news. The word of God stands forever, and that word is God's love, God's promise, and God's redemption. Believe the good news that in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now, may the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. And uh, greet one another with the peace of Christ in whatever way you are able. Maybe those in your household uh, maybe take a moment and send uh, a quick email or a text message or uh, right there on the Facebook page. Um, greet one another with the peace of Christ. Now, um, Brad Cruzan, again from home, uh, will be reading this morning's scripture passage from the prophet Isaiah. Our first scripture this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received in the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. 
The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let's pray. Mighty God, send your Holy Spirit. Send your Holy Spirit to speak that the good news may be proclaimed through your word, which stands forever. Amen. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare. This passage from the prophet Isaiah um, comes, comes in the midst of and, and comes from a difficult time. God's people are in exile in Babylon. Their home, their social, communal, economic, and religious life has been swept away and pulled out from underneath of them. And they have found themselves now in a strange land. They are in the wilderness of exile. Now, if you've spent any sort of of time in any sort of wilderness. You can, you can perhaps appreciate the power of this wilderness imagery. In the wilderness, obstacles show up all over the place. Perhaps a, a daunting climb up a, up a mountain or a cliff, or maybe a, a valley or a ravine that's too steep to scramble down. Or maybe it's just that after a while it all starts to look the same. You get turned around and you can't, can't find your way out. Or it's just that it's, it's so vast that you end up aimlessly walking and wandering around, just hoping for a bit of luck. There's a reason. There's a reason they tell you to, to stay, stay to the trails, right? And that if you get lost, you're supposed to hug a tree. You're supposed to stay put because the wilderness can, can turn you around. And so it can be next to impossible to even return the way you came. At the time of, of Isaiah, God's people are in the wilderness of exile. And they are unsure of the way forward. And so it's there. It's there in that time. And in that place that God speaks, that Isaiah proclaims, a voice cries out, in the wilderness... Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every, every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. This word of hope comes to God's people. A promise of a, of a return home where all the hills and mountains that might stand in the way are brought low and, and the valleys and ravines are lifted up and a clear path is marked through the desert, through the wilderness. Now, as often happens when, when the prophets speak, the time came when that immediate promise to that specific particular context, it was fulfilled. And, and God's people returned home from exile. They returned from Babylon back to Jerusalem. And yet, also again, as, 
as often happens when the prophets speak, those words also speak into, into more than just that first immediate context. But they speak to, they speak into something, something deeper in all of us. These words are both immediate and eternal. Indeed, that is what the season of Advent is all about. Looking back at the promise of God showing up. In this case, showing up in the return from, from exile in Babylon to Jerusalem. Or, or even in our, in our own case, this time of year, on this side of that first Christmas, we look back to 2,000 years ago at the, at the promise of God and in all its fullness showing up in that manger all those years ago and also at the same time that we know we still look forward to the fulfillment of that promise. And so centuries later, long after Isaiah, after God's people have returned from exile, so the truth is they still found themselves, even, even back in Jerusalem, still found themselves in, in many ways home, but not quite at home. You may know that feeling. Centuries later, a voice is heard crying out in the wilderness. The gospel writer Mark, who we, uh, we don't read much from at, uh, at Christmas time, we read a lot of, of Matthew and Luke, right? They're the two gospel writers that, that tell of the birth of Jesus. They're the ones who have the, the angels and the shepherds and, and Mary and Joseph and, and baby Jesus and all of those wonderful things of nativity scenes and Christmas cards. And then there's the gospel writer John who begins with those awesome and powerful and transcendent Words that pull you immediately to the heavens and all that eternal glory. You may remember the opening lines of John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then a bit later, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Powerful Christmas stuff. But Mark, Mark doesn't have any of that. In fact, this is how Mark opens his gospel account. The beginning of the good news. That's the word gospel, good news. The beginning of the gospel, of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see or behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And then right then and there, we find ourselves in the strangest of company there in the wilderness. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him. And were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then we are not brought up to the glory of the heavens, but we are, we are almost unceremoniously just thrown into the wilderness. Because apparently, that's where the good news of Jesus begins. Not in the hustle and bustle and, and pomp and circumstance of the, the places of power or glory or comfort or even safety, but in the wilderness. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then we immediately find ourselves face to face with, with this guy, his, his beard, no doubt, sticky with wild honey and, and bugs probably still in his teeth from lunch, 
somewhere out there in the wilderness. And Mark says that's where the beginning of the good news of Jesus is being proclaimed. You see, the thing that we have to come to terms with about the good news of Jesus showing up, that's where, that's where it shows up. We would prefer it show up anywhere but the wilderness, but, but Mark here says, no, this is where it begins. This is where we find it, in the wilderness. That's the, the wisdom of the church with seasons like, like Advent. Or if you think ahead a few months, the season of Lent that leads us into Easter. Because without understanding or seeing the wilderness that we so often find ourselves stumbling into or the, or the wilderness that often finds its way inside of us, we might have a nice holiday here in a couple weeks, but it's not going to be good news I mean, listen to this, right? Comfort, oh, comfort my people. Speak tenderly and cry to her that she has served her term, her penalty paid, and has received double for all her sins. That is only good news when you realize the wilderness that you have, that you have been in and the wilderness that has been in you. Otherwise, stuff like that just becomes the most awkward Christmas card ever. And a voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry, writes Isaiah. Cry this. All people are grass, their constancy like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. Surely the people are grass. The word of the Lord will stand forever. Again, not so much a, a very Merry Christmas card, and yet, and yet, we read on. So get you up to a high mountain, you herald of good tidings, of good news, of gospel, and lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up and do not fear and say, here is your God. See, it's not so much in our carefully cultivated gardens, but, in the, but it's in the wilderness that we really see the grass withers and the flower fades. Unless, of course, I'm the one tending your garden, and then it's, it's all wilderness, and we'll get the point really, really quick. But you get, you get the idea here. The wilderness places and the wilderness times, they, they are what pull things back with the truth of this, because then it is truly good news that it is the word of the Lord that stands forever, because it is the word of the Lord that calls forth new life. And then there's John, that sticky with honey, bugs in his teeth, eccentrically dressed baptizer, out there in the wilderness, crying out. And this is the beginning as far as Mark is concerned. This is how you get there. The beginning of the good news, of the glad tidings, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And what is John doing out there? He's proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And look, something like that, that is either profoundly good news or it is awkward and kind of insulting, right? Repentance means to turn around, to have your mind changed, to have your heart changed, to, to turn, turn from one thing and orient yourself uh, towards something else. And so if we are convinced that we are not lost in the wilderness and that we know the way, thank you very much, somebody calling out and crying to us, repent, repent, turn around, turn around, there's a far better way. Well, nobody likes a backseat driver, right? But if we know that we are in the wilderness, or maybe even that, that it's the wilderness that's in us, if we know and see and behold that we have run up against mountains and ravines, that we have gotten all turned around inside and out, well then, when one cries out and says to us, here is repentance, 
Here is how to turn around. Here is the way. Well, then that might really be the beginning of some really, really, really good news. You know, we, we are in a difficult time. There's no doubt about it. We are in a time of a type of wilderness, a type even of exile, right? Nothing at all like the Babylonian exile, but still. Circumstances have, have pulled out from under us or, or at least made us make difficult and even painful choices for the sake of one another, right? It's happened upon us in this season, this season that has seemed to go on and on and on, a, a wilderness of sorts from, from the way things have, have always been, from our life together, a type of exile even from, from this place, right here, this place where we are so used to, to gathering together in and around and through the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And doing all those things we lo love to do here together, singing together, fellowshipping, hugs and handshakes, goodness, even being able to see faces, right? The smile of someone else. Circumstances have pulled that out from under us. And many of us feel the exhaustion of this particular wilderness. The mountains that we keep trying to climb the valleys that it seems we keep getting pulled into. The unsure and unstable footing beneath, beneath us and, and that feeling that we are, are just wandering aimlessly without any sure path forward. And so maybe this year, maybe this year, even as we know these particular circumstances aren't forever, right? Things, things may very well be different after, but this, this isn't forever. But even so, maybe our experience with it, if we let it, if we invite it to, maybe it can actually help us hear the good news, gospel, glad tidings in the wilderness, hope and promise. That has, been, that has spoken into all that is otherwise fading and fleeting. Spoken into it by, by the one whose word stands forever. You see, if, if Christmas means anything, it is that God has shown up. And that God continues to show up. And that God will show up to meet us right where we are, wilderness and all. beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Not here, as wonderful and as good a place as this is, and, and places and spaces do matter, but the fact of Jesus, the fact of the incarnation, that the Word that stands forever has become flesh to dwell with us, that means that the good news of Jesus Christ always begins right where you are. Whether it is on a Sunday morning in your living room instead of a church sanctuary. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, meets us in all of our, our attempts, our successes and our failures alike to balance and navigate quarantines and, and stay-at-home orders and in virtual learning and working at home, it always begins and meets us right where we are. It meets us in our lamenting of, of traditions that won't happen at all in the same way this year. It meets us in the wilderness of our grief over so much that has been lost and our exhaustion with just trying to find a path forward. That's where the good news 
of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comes right on into our world. And beyond and under and, and before and after this particular season that we find ourselves in, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, meets us in all the ways that we've gotten twisted and turned around, inside or out, in our hearts, in our minds, in our actions, in our lives. Jesus meets us in all of those places that we've gotten twisted and turned around so much so that even, even when we wanted to, wanted to repent to turn around, we still can't quite seem to know the way. The good news of Jesus, which is Jesus Himself, comes and meets us there in all of those places. Like one standing on a mountain for all to see, pointing the way. And like a shepherd come to gather, guide, and carry His sheep the way home through the wilderness. The good news of Jesus Christ begins there. Like a voice crying out in the wilderness. And by the way, this, this also means that there are, there are those, there are our sisters and brothers in other parts of, of the church other communities that know the wilderness and what it is to find yourself out there in, the, in those, those margin, marginal places and all that, that, that far more than, than we or you or I, they know the wilderness places and we would do well, we would do well to listen when they speak of all that is bound up in the good news of Jesus Christ, because you can't understand that until you understand and grapple with the wilderness. And so here in this season of preparation, know this, family. Know this, that our Advent hope and the Christmas promise, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, always comes to meet us in the places that are least expected and most needed. And so even in the wilderness times and places, even in these times and these places, let us hear and receive that we too might, might prepare and make a way through repentance and hope for us and indeed for all who know what the wilderness is like. Let us too hear and receive all those voices crying out from the wilderness, all those who are lifting up their voices in those places with strength proclaiming, yet here is our God. And then let us join, let us join in that great wilderness choir with our voices. Lift them up and do not fear that we too, we too might be heralds of this good news, proclaiming to one another and to the world, wherever we find ourselves, here is our God, the one who has come to meet us in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the very good news in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, uh, let's do that. Let's lift our voices and let's sing. Love. 
peace that waits for them. Tell them that their sins I covered and their warfare now is Here in just a moment, we are going to celebrate um, the Lord's Supper together, Uh, but before we do that, we do have some announcements um, of uh, what's going on in the life of the church coming up. Uh, First, worship this winter. Um, We will continue to be worshiping through this season, uh, worshiping uh, online uh, in, in the same way we are doing doing now. Uh, and, and again, we are continuing to celebrate uh, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper on the first Sundays of each, each month. Um, and communion elements are available for each household uh, to pick up here at the, at the church uh, in the weeks leading up uh, to the beginning of each, each month. So those, um, those are available, and usually there's a little something extra in the, in the bag as, as well, um, just to uh, continue to, to help us um, remain together, remain fellowshipping together, even in these times when we um, often have to be apart. Uh, so please, please make note of that. Uh, also, uh, we continue to have our weekly morning prayer. Uh, that is on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, at 9 a.m., uh, and it lasts till just about, just around 9, 9.15 or 9.20 um, it is a, a time to begin uh, the day t- together with some scripture and uh, with some guided prayer. Uh, so you are invited to, to join us. Um, join us there. The, the Zoom links are emailed out um, each week. If you don't get one, you can just contact uh, myself or the church office, and we'll, um, we'll get you the, the Zoom link. It's the same link uh, every Tuesday and Thursday each week. It's, just, it's, it's one link, so um, you can use them. And just put them on your calendar um, 
and you can use them each, use the same link each, each week for that. Also, uh, our Zoom fellowship time is on the third Sundays at 12.30 p.m. So again, uh, the Zoom link um, is emailed out, uh, but you can also contact uh, the church office uh, for, for that, and uh, it's also the same link each, each month. We are in the season of Advent and, uh, and Christmas. We do have Advent devotions. Uh, devotionals are available. They were, they were emailed out, um, I think, a week and a half ago or so. Um, so they are there. You can print them out. You can use them right on your computer or your phone. Uh, if you did not get one um, or you can't find the email, uh, just let us know and we can send it to you again. Um, or if you would prefer a, a hard copy sent to you, uh, let us know that as well, and we can, we can certainly do that. And also, finally, uh, Christmas Eve is coming up here in a few weeks, and we will have uh, information uh, very soon about uh, what that will look like this year uh, and how to, uh, how to participate in that. So um, uh, keep, your, keep your eyes open, be on alert, and watch for that information. Now, um, we have our Christmas joy offering uh, is our regular or our special offering. Um, We usually collect it on Christmas Eve, and uh, you will be getting information mailed to you about about that offering. Uh, But this morning, um, one of our uh, mission committee members, Lynn Corellis, uh, from home, will be giving us a little minute for mission about uh, what the what the Christmas part of what the Christmas joy offering uh, is is all about. Reverend Dr. Stuart M. Patterson has been living with multiple sclerosis for years. As his health has recently forced him to retire, gifts from the Christmas joy offering have come to have special meaning for him. A portion of gifts received from Presbyterians and congregations like ours grow toward supporting church leaders in their times of critical financial need. This is something Reverend Patterson truly appreciates. Several years ago, he received a grant from the assistance program at the Board of Pensions and the Presbytery of Chicago. Reverend Patterson used his grant for the purchase of a specialized scooter, which he has affectionately named Diblasi in honor of the manufacturer. A scooter seems like a simple thing, but in fact, it was a game changer. Diblasi made it possible for him to continue his ministry as a solo pastor of the Community Presbyterian Church of Lombard, Illinois a calling that he answered with love for more than 20 years. Now that he is fully retired, the Board of Pensions is also providing support and assistance as Reverend Patterson navigates the Social Security Administration system, which he says can be a very difficult process. They tell me what they need and they just kind of get the job done, he explains. You just know you have someone there to help you navigate all the red tape is so helpful. Reverend Patterson offers an important perspective for us to think about in dealing with the many challenges of things like COVID-19 virus. For lots of people, the virus was a temporary stay-at-home thing, he says. A disability can be a stay-at-home thing, sometimes a permanent stay-at-home thing, if you don't have anywhere to turn for help. What the Board of Pension does is really important to me and others like me, so that we may carry on even with our disabilities. They've helped in many ways that have opened up my life. Reverend Patterson wants everyone to know how much it means to have the support of the Board of Pensions in his life in the lives of other retirees and church leaders who need a helping hand. I'm grateful for those who give to this offering, he said. If Reverend Patterson were with us today, I'm sure he would be nodding in agreement when I say 
that when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Please give generously. Let us pray. O oh God of hope and healing, scoot us into places where our hands can help and we can be places where your healing and your hope are shared. Amen. Thank you, uh, Lynn, um, who shared just uh, one aspect of what uh, the Christmas Joy offering um, goes to. We'll be hearing throughout this month um, other, other places, other things that that offering uh, goes to help, help support. Um, so uh, we invite you to, to consider ways that, that you might be able to give uh, towards this, um, this good and special, special offering. Well, now it is, uh, it is the time in w which we gather um, around this table and our tables uh, to celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper um, together. As we, as we prepare to, to celebrate the Supper, I invite you to take just a moment wherever you are and look around. Look around at where you are. A living room, a dining room, perhaps some other place in your home, wherever it is. It's probably not where you would otherwise expect to, to be on a Sunday morning celebrating the Lord's Supper, and yet these are the places we find ourselves. Here we are, in these vast and different places, about to proclaim together in this meal the good news that has come to us. This meal... This meal is a herald of glad tidings, of good news proclaimed perhaps in the strangest and most unexpected of places. The good news of Jesus Christ proclaimed and herald to us always begins right where we are. This is a meal of hope for all who find themselves in places they would rather not be. This meal is the gift of God for the people of God. And you are welcome at the Lord's table. It is not my invitation to give. It is the Lord's to give. And the Lord gives freely. So as we partake of this good news meal, we, uh, we begin by, by confessing and affirming our faith. This morning, we're going to do so using the, the Nicene Creed, which is one of the oldest creeds of the, of the Christian church. It is, it is an appropriate uh, confession and affirmation of faith for, for many reasons. Uh, and one of my favorite this time of year is that uh, at the Council of Nicaea in the 4th century, uh, the council that, that forged this confession of faith in a, in a time of, of turmoil and trouble in the church, they forge this confession of faith as a way to, to unite the church and remind the church of the good news uh, that has called, called to us and called us in and calls us to proclaim. Um, there was at that council one bishop of, of Myra, Bishop Nicholas of Myra, otherwise known as St. Nicholas. That's right, Santa Claus helped give us this confession an affirmation of faith, helped give it, gift it to the church. It is a confession that has helped guide and unite the church throughout the years. And so let us affirm our faith together, for it is the faithfulness of this God that we proclaim that affirms us as God's children, redeemed and loved through Christ Jesus. So friends, let us say what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. <coughs> Excuse me. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right, and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. O God, on this second Sunday of Advent, we ponder our human predicament, recognizing how often we find ourselves overwhelmed by circumstances, stuck in in ditches of various sorts, or, or given to aimless meanderings on paths that lead us nowhere, or buried under by seemingly insurmountable challenges and obstacles. And yet you have promised to lift every valley, straighten the crooked path, and level the mountains in order to come to us and lead us home. Indeed, for this reason, Jesus Christ has come into the world. Your very love incarnate. Your very promise embodied. Empower us by your Spirit to see the way you have set before us. Empower us as a community of faith to accompany one another on the journey. Help us to listen to each other with compassion when we feel, feel fearful or angry or lost. And help us to recognize your tender love that is ever before us. Help us to believe the good news of the gospel that we are not left to our own devices. You have not left us in the ditch or aimlessly wandering in circles in exile. You have drawn close, dwelling among us in the incarnate Christ, bringing freedom to the captives of sin and to establish justice for the oppressed. Jesus came among us as one of us, taking the lot of the poor, sharing in human suffering. We rejoice that in his death and rising again, you set before us the sure promise of new life, the certain hope of a heavenly home where we will sit at table with Christ as our host. So remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this cup, and we joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service, that we may herald the good news of this mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and the cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. We pray for this world, for the world of nations, including our own, as we continue to grapple with a relentless pandemic, divisions, and the groanings of a sinful world. We pray for all who are grieving loss during these difficult days. O God, help us to live responsibly in ways that protect the well-being of others and in ways that courageously seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. We pray for all who are grieving the loss of loved ones during these days. We pray that you would grant wisdom to the leadership of our local communities, our cities, our states, and our country, that they might discern a path forward in these times. 
Indeed, grant all of us wisdom and courage for the living in these days. We pray this morning for those known to us. We pray for for Marcia and her family mourning the death of her father. We pray for for D.A. and Jeannie recovering from surgery. And in this time of, of shutdowns and pauses, we lift up businesses, employees and employers who are hit hard by these attempts to get the virus under control. And we remember those especially separated from loved ones. We lift up those at Chapel Hill, Waterman Lake, Atria, and the Highlands Assisted Living Facilities. Those in hospitals and rehab facilities. And all for whom this, this time is an added burden. It is in the hope and promise of our present and coming Lord Jesus Christ that we ask these things and that together we are bold to pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, he took the bread. And after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and pouring it out, he said, This cup is, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Sisters and brothers, every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. As we prepare at our own places, perhaps breaking open these elements of bread and the cup, I invite you to do so and to hold them for a moment, uh, for a time of reflection through song, after which we will partake of this meal together.
Sisters and brothers, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given for you. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, given for you. Let us pray. Strengthen us, O God, in the power of your Spirit to bring good news to the poor and lift blind eyes to sight, to loose the chains that bind and claim your blessing for all people. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Amen. Now please join in singing our closing hymn, Prepare the Way. sisters and brothers, receive this charge and benediction taken from um, 2 Peter chapter 3 and Isaiah 40. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found in Him at peace. As heralds of good tidings, lifting up your voices with strength and do not fear. Sisters and brothers, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen.